Hello, and welcome to Germantown Municipal Television's special coverage of Election 2024. My name is Jack Bacher, and I'm a student at Houston High School. I am excited to bring you interviews of Germantown Alderman candidates. Joining me now is Germantown, Germantown Alderman Position 5 candidate, Tony Salvaggio. Mr. Salvaggio has been a resident of Germantown since 1981 and has served on the Germantown Board of Zoning Appeals and currently on Germantown's Planning Commission. Mr. Salvaggio owns Memphis Dorn Hardware and also owns a new home construction and renovation company, Salvaggio Group. Mr. Salvaggio was married and raised his family in Germantown. They have four children who attended Germantown schools. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Would you please introduce yourself and share what motivated you to run for alderman? So I've lived in Germantown since 1981. Uh, went to grade school at Riverdale, went to Germantown High School, raised four kids in Germantown. Um, my dad was an alderman back in 86 to 89, the mayor 89 to 94. I kind of caught the bug back then. Never really thought I would run, but <clears throat> It's been a great experience um, just living in Germantown, being able to serve on various commissions, and um, it's just a really good opportunity, yes, and I, I'm ready to go. Yes, sir. The city's last budget cycle prioritized public safety, public schools, parks, and public infrastructure. How do you plan to continue supporting these areas, and are there any new initiatives you're considering to enhance these services? So obviously, you know, the city has to, has to budget every year for these priorities. They're critical priorities that people move to Germantown for because they know that they're going to be the best. Um, Germantown, I think, is at a critical position where we've got very little land left in Germantown, so we need to long-range land plan how that land is going to be used. That'll increase property exposure from taxes. Instead of just putting the burden on people who already live here, We've got to maximize the potential of those properties to generate tax dollars. Um, you know, generating revenue in other areas, we're, we're working through a, a soccer performance park off of Forest Hill in Winchester. Uh, that's a great opportunity to generate revenue with people coming in town and patronizing our hotels, restaurants, um, buying gas, all those little things add up to generate enough revenue to keep the burden off of the current homeowner. Yes, sir. Thank you. The Houston High School Master Plan is a significant project for our community. How do you propose securing funding for this initiative while maintaining fiscal responsibility? So that's a big project. It's a great project. It's something that Germantown needs. Again, people move to Germantown for um, all the great things that we have. Schools are absolutely one of them. Um, you know, Germantown schools rank top in the state, the country every year. When you have a project that's over $170 million, you have to, in my opinion, as a builder, you have to look at it in sections and you have to break it down, uh, you know, no different than running a household. You know your roof has to be replaced in five years, you know the house has to be painted, you budget for those things. And I think I've got a unique opportunity to work with the school board to help create a path to compartmentalize certain areas of that project and break it down into chunks. Um, you know, we say in the building industry, chew the elephant one bite at a time, and that's an elephant. You know, we've got to work hard to, to make it happen. Um, it'll be a great asset to the city, have state-of-the-art school, but we cannot put that burden strictly on the taxpayer. Yes, sir, thank you. Based on your experience, what do you believe Germantown is excelling at, and where do you see opportunities for improvement? I think we absolutely excel at public safety, police, fire, EMS. We, uh, again, rank top in the state, top in the nation. Um, you know, we, we can call the police department, know they're going to be there in three minutes. We can call the fire department, know they're going to be there in four minutes. Uh, you know, we, we have an elderly population in Germantown. We have children that live with that elderly population. They can go to sleep at night knowing if, uh, if an elderly um, family member has an issue in the middle of the night, two in the morning, we can call EMS, they can call EMS and they're there on the spot. It's um, absolutely paramount that we continue to fund those groups, give them the best training possible, the best tools possible to be able to continue to be the best in the business. Yes, sir, thank you. What are the most pressing concerns you've heard from residents and how do you plan to address them moving forward? 
So public safety has been the biggest concern. Every, every person I've talked to has said, what are we going to do about public safety? Um, you know, when I first started, I had a, a, a resident send me a picture of um, their neighborhood in the south part of Germantown and, and a video of guys doing donuts in the middle of the street at 2 in the morning. And, you know, as being a resident here almost 45 years, that's not something I think anybody's accustomed to. We've got to recognize that we're bordered by Memphis on three sides. We've got to have a police presence. I think at any given moment, anybody who drives through Germantown should see one, two, three police cars at any time. And relatively speaking, I think that's what happens. Um, I drive from the Memphis to the Carrierville border daily, multiple times, three, four police cars, not a shock to see. That's going to let people know if they're in Germantown for the wrong reason, we have police officers everywhere. Yes, sir. Thank you. What long-term vision do you have for Germantown, and how do you plan to engage with residents to achieve it? So one big plan I have, if I don't accomplish anything else in my four years, is a public preparedness plan. Um, I have I've run my idea around 25 people throughout my, my campaign, and public preparedness, in my opinion, is different than public safety. Public preparedness is having a group of volunteers dedicated to the city that are residents, non-residents, uh, retired or active police, military, uh, doctors, contractors, restaurant owners. When you take those four categories of people and we have an emergency like in 1993, we had a tornado come through. I lived right around the corner and it took half of our house down. We had groups of people who came out of nowhere to help. Um, we didn't have to wait on TEMA, we didn't have to wait on FEMA. We were ready, we acted because people jumped in the service. I think a, um, a group of people that are trained, um, people who have those credentials already, let's say that we have a public, we have a natural disaster like they're dealing with in North Carolina right now or in Florida right now. The police officers can enact the volunteer guys who come in they can direct traffic and let our police officers do their job. If medical aid needs to be given, EMS can continue to do their job while volunteer doctors, nurses can come in and work. Restaurant tours, we can call restaurants and say, we need food, we need food now, we can't wait on the Red Cross. Um, these are critical things that, that I think in light of what we're seeing now with these natural disasters, we have to be prepared for. Builders, seems like an odd group to have in there, we have bobcats, we have equipment, we have chainsaws, we have trailers, we have trucks. People that I've talked to and asked their opinion on this have been overwhelmingly responsive that this has to happen. Um, it's a big ask, it's a lot. Uh, there's, there's all kind of hurdles we have to go through, but I think that's something I'm gonna dig in really hard and, and make happen. Well, thank you, Mr. Salvaggio. We thank appreciate you. your time greatly, and thank you again for joining us today. Thank you. That is all we have for this interview. I would like to thank my guest, Tony Salvaggio, who is running for Germantown Alderman position five. If you would like to watch more of our election coverage, please follow us on our YouTube channel, as well as Comcast channel 1083 and AT&T Uverse channel 99. We will be back with more interviews from Germantown Alderman and school board candidates. Thanks for watching.